Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. Hope everybody's having a great day, getting ready for another weekend. Um, so I have a good story. I could totally relate to this story. So without further ado, right on with the story. Hi, this could be a Bigfoot story, but it's not the focal point. We lived beside my grandfather's property in the early 70s. He had about 75 acres, and that was perfect for hunting groundhogs and other small pests. Our 22 rifle was perfect. I should point out that this was in Ontario, Canada, southern portion where Bigfoot was a movie monster before the internet. In recent years, I have learned we get reports of sightings three hours away from where we are. On the property was a swamp, similar to the ones that you would see in the bayou, with moss hanging from the trees that are sticking out of the water. We hunted bullfrogs and just for the frog legs in the summer, and we had uh, snowmobile parties there in the winter. In the summer, we rode bikes, but only in groups back around the beaver meadow. It was open, not dark, yet gave us an eerie feeling as if you shouldn't be there. Many times there were no sounds in that area at all, almost a dead zone. We always heard a knocking wood sound, but at the time it was not a thing we knew about. We didn't know creatures would do that. This was just a pond. Further back was my grandfather's old sap shanty that had started to shift and fall over. That was too creepy, and the feelings that we got there were a thousand times worse. An old house that was falling down in worse shape would have kept us out. Seemed inviting compared to the shanty. One night, five of my friends were standing around by our motorbikes, taunting each other to ride back to the beaver meadow in the dark. They put on their bravest face, as brave as a bunch of 13-year-olds can be, and they made their best tough guy excuses. I was lucky enough not to need an excuse, as my headlight wasn't working. As our pissing contest continued, two of us noticed a small but bright light coming from the beaver meadow, and it hovered about 40 feet off the ground. It didn't move until all of us were looking. At that point, it suddenly veered to the left, fast enough to leave a light streak like a sparkler when you swing it around, and, and then it stopped dead. Then again, it flashed upwards and again stopped dead, leaving a faint light trail. This continued for about 10 minutes. It, z it zigged, then stopped, then zagged, and stopped. Its journey was almost instantaneous. When it finally stopped, I'd say another five minutes or so, allowing us to get a good idea of what it might be. It was not a saucer shape nor an egg shape. It was combined of the two, kind of oblong. It had no lights flashing and the whole craft gave off a bright white light. As we watched it, it seemed to grow ever so slightly, so slow that it took a few seconds to realize it was moving towards us. The area it had come up out of was a little better than a quarter mile away from us, and the fields between were pea fields, so nothing high enough at that distance to impede our view. It was a cool night and no insects were making a sound, nor was this object. From the start, it followed us. It seemed like it was running about five miles an hour, never speeding up. It was about 50 yards from us. We saw it clearly. It was white with no windows or external markings. The closer it came, the clearer we could see what looked like a single poured object emitting a light that seemed to create a circle directly under it, with no diffusion past the shape of the body. It never sped up or slowed down until it sat directly over our small group. 
it stopped without any sound and stayed in place for what seemed to have been a minute, a minute and a half. During this time, we could see it was around 30 feet above us. It didn't spin or hum, it just sat. We didn't feel any movement of air, no heat or any other sensation, but awe in what we were seeing. Then suddenly it took off straight up and disappeared as a pinpoint of light into the sea of stars above us. It was a bright light, yet it didn't hurt our eyes. And when it left, we were seeing fine in the evening sky. Our eyes didn't need to be adjusted from the light it gave off to the dark we were now left with. Well, that's it. We stood around for about an hour or so, trying to figure out what we had just seen. The way it started and stopped would have crushed a pilot. I had been fascinated with modern jets since I had heard of the Canadian Avro Aero, said to have been the fastest jet at the time. 20 years ahead of its time. So the way it moved so fast and then so slow was a mystery. We all finally got called in for the night and I laid awake for a couple of hours trying to make sense of it. I thought in the morning the five of us would gather our, into our fort and throw out what we thought it was. Well, I was wrong. When we got together, no one knew what I was talking about. They remembered standing around talking until they were called in for the night, but nothing about the light that flew over us. We had grown up together, were inseparable and best friends. We were out on our bikes from sun up to sundown, snuck into the driveway, down the road together, right up until that night. Two became very mean and wanted to pick on everyone. One quit coming around, and one decided he liked staying inside and watching TV all the time. I tried a few times over the years to talk to them individually, thinking that they didn't want to seem crazy in front of the other guys. But each time, I just got a puzzled look. Looking back at the beaver meadow, the feeling of the dread and the knocks I wrote of makes me wonder... Three hours travel for a Bigfoot to an area where there's deer and other small animals and plenty of wooded area. And the fact that reports are made just three hours from here in Ontario. Well, that's my possible non-Bigfoot, Bigfoot story with a strange light added. My name is Jamie. You can use my name if you want. J is fine too. P.S. About a mile away from the beaver meadow, a neighbor had a pit that he used to collect chicken poop. Not sure why, but it was like a pond and he just put the poop in it. On the other side of my parents' place, again about a mile, was a pig farm. The beaver meadow was well back at least a quarter mile from either, and yet we smelled an awful stench at that meadow. At the time, we figured it was the chicken poop or the pig, or a combination. But placement doesn't really fit thinking about it now. It was as if a dog had rolled in cow manure and rancid swamp water. Today, it's above my pay grade. Love your show. Keep up the good work. Jamie Hanna, Southern Ontario, Canada. Well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, So I I sent Jamie uh, an email back because I kind of, I could relate a little bit because I had some stuff in my past that I experienced with other people and yet it was so traumatizing that they had no memory of it. And I've had other people mention this as well that, you know, they experienced things with family members, but yet the family members had no memory of it. So I think it, what it boils down to is trauma. Some people just can't handle the trauma. So their brains shut it down as if it never happened. So, and I think that no matter how much pressure you put on somebody to remember it, doesn't matter. 
they don't remember it, they just don't remember it. Anyways, guys, I think I'm going to stop there. I hope you had a great time. If not, I hope I was just made your evening a little less boring. Anyways, you know I love you. Don't forget, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, and subscribe. And we'll see you back here in a couple of days. And don't forget, check out the new channel. And no, I'm not going to say this every time. It's just when I think about it, I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> okay, bye for now.